Okay, so in this walkthrough, we're going to be taking a closer look at Ghosts. Um, so once you installed the Arcade Series Returns pack, uh, just navigate to the packs folder um, like so, and you see all the devices. Um, so for each of the four different devices um, in the pack, you've got one for each controller. So they're supported by all launch pads, Mark 1, 2, and the Pro. Push one and two and machine jam. Uh, there is also just a, a MIDI version for each device as well um, that just res responds to MIDI coming in from any keyboard or controller. Um, so we're looking at ghosts. Um, so I'm going to be using the, the launch pad for this demo. Um, a lot of the controls are the same across controllers. So uh, essentially all the devices make use of the eight by eight grid, the scene launch buttons, and the shift button. So on the Launchpad Pro and Push, there is a shift button. On Machine Jam, uh, you want to use the select button and on Launchpad Mark 1 and 2, it's the it's actually the user 2 button uh, that acts as a shift button. So uh, this demo will hopefully translate to other controllers that you might be using. Um, so let's load up uh, Ghosts. Uh, so Ghost is based on uh, the classic arcade game Pac-Man um, and what I wanted to do was take the uh, the concept of how the ghosts move and try to turn that into a sequencer. Um, so if we just first of all set the device up, um, the first thing you need to do whenever you're loading one of the arcade devices you need to refresh the menu by clicking this button and it will populate the current uh, connected controllers uh, in, in the menu and you want to pick your controllers. In this case, it's Launchpad Pro. Uh, and what we'll see is the main difference is the user button will turn orange and that tells us it's working. Uh, this, all the arcade devices for Launchpad and Launchpad Pro, they operate in user or user two mode. So if we come over to user two mode, uh, we can now tell that it's, um, it's taken over the user two mode. If you want to release control or release the takeover at any time, you can just turn the arcade button off and it just resumes normal behavior. Also, the device only takes over a controller whilst the actual device is selected. So by clicking on another device, it resumes usual behavior or if we, even if we change track, it does also. Okay, so only when this device is in focus is it actually taking over the controller. Uh, so to get started then, let's just do a preset. So there's a few presets in there. There's a tiny little drop down menu at the top. Uh, let's go for Flynn. And what we have is a uh, like a mini version of the Pac-Man maze, um, just without Pac-Man. It's just the ghosts. Um, so what I liked about the ghosts was the way they move around, they seem to get to a junction and then make a sort of a random decision as to which way they go. And that's what we have here. So let me just turn these off and we'll just go with the one for now. And if we, we can just pick where we want the blue ghost to start playback from, like so. And what the ghost is doing is every time it gets to some sort of junction, it's making a, a random decision as to which way to go. Um, and this is, this is completely random. There are ways of looping this, which I'll show you later on. Uh, but for now, uh, what is interesting is, is how he moves around and the notes have been triggered. We can see the yellow notes. Now we can edit all of this. So we can use the scene launch buttons or we can use the, the buttons on the actual device and the menu at the bottom to control things like uh, essentially ghosts one to four are here and they're color coded as well. So pink ghost, green ghost, yellow ghost. So we can have the four ghosts running at the same time. And the bottom four buttons let us see the path, which is essentially the, the path they're following, the maze. The notes, the yellow notes are being triggered. So we could turn these off. So there's no notes to trigger. Uh, accent, so accent notes. And then speed boosts, which I'll come on to in a moment. Okay, so Let's just, if we hold down shift as well, shift will 
clear uh, the the grids for us also. So let's go back to the, the path. So the path we can choose either here or with the, the menu, we choose path. Um, I was using a preset before, but you can actually create your own path uh, like so. So essentially you're creating your own uh, pattern. Uh, you can't have uh, four, um, you can't have four squares next to each other. It won't let you. Um, it has to be like a single file path. So if I want one here, um, I'd have to get rid of this one here, for example. Okay. So I've created a path like this. Okay, and then let's go to notes and we'll place some notes in here as well. Okay, and then let's go to the blue ghost and drop the blue ghost on there. Okay, let's choose the accent and make a slightly louder note there. We can control the settings of the accents as well in the uh, global section over here. We can choose the depth of accent and what the maximum velocity is. And this is also obviously dependent on the instrument you're using and if it's responding to different velocities and what it's doing with that. Okay, uh, and then also we have these um, speed pills. Um, so dropping a speed pill somewhere. Depending on the settings here, so each ghost has its own settings, which I'll come on to in a moment, but we can choose some speed settings, like the, the, the percentage, the, the chance of speed affecting a ghost. And what it means is, when the ghost lands on a speed pill, it will either uh, give it a speed boost and will temporarily speed it up, as we can see there, or it will slow the ghost down. So this is its normal speed, and now it's slowing down. And this happens for only a certain amount of steps. You can choose how many steps that's going to happen for. So at the moment it's just doing it for eight steps, and once it's exhausted, exhausted those eight steps, uh, it resumes its usual um, rate. Let's drop another ghost in. So this ghost, I've got the speed uh, amount on 0% which means it won't be affected by the speed pills only the blue ghost is currently affected by them but it will trigger uh, the notes. We can choose uh, the chance of a note being triggered so you could have a lot of notes being triggered here but each ghost has a note percentage so I could pull this down which means the pink ghost isn't triggering any notes at the moment or we can give it a value of 50 so there's a 50-50 chance that it will trigger a note so it just allows you to create a bit of variation if you want to ease it off or um, have it full on. Okay, so each ghost um, has its own settings over here. So one, two, three, and four. And you can have them running at different rates. They can have their own velocity. A percentage or uh, uh, a depth of how much the accent affects this ghost. So with a uh, accent at 100%, um, when the blue ghost goes on an accentuated note, it will trigger it to its full velocity, like 127. Um, if it's just on 50%, then it will be somewhere between this velocity and the maximum velocity of 127 if it lands on one of the orange accent notes. Uh, we can choose the octave so we can make it high pitch. There's also a range, so the range determines the range of notes that are being triggered within a scale. So over on the right hand side we can pick a scale, we're in major at the moment, let's try something else. And we can also choose a key to work in also. So let's just turn the other ghosts off for now. And just focus on the pink ghost. So at the moment we'll drop it down to minus one. And if I bring the range right down, it's only triggering a couple of, maybe one or maybe two different notes from its lowest sort of value. But if I increase the range, let's make it a bit faster. It 
It's essentially covering a wider range of, of notes within the scale, within the minor pentatonic scale that is. And we can choose the length of the notes. We can either do this in milliseconds or we can have them uh, synchronized to note divisions. The grid then um, is how is which notes are actually being triggered because what we're doing when we're triggering or placing notes on the grid is we're just saying that this this particular spot will activate a note when a ghost uh, lands on it, but it doesn't tell us what the pitch of that note is. So how this works is each ghost can have its own grid layout. Now that means there's already a layout of notes um, within a scale underneath here and rather than picking each one separately which would take a long time um, there are these options so horizontal plus what this means is the lowest note starts here and it goes across and it goes all the way up until we get to the highest note here it's as if your keyboard is laid out or your piano is laid out like so if we go to the horizontal minus the lowest note starts in the top right corner and it sort of goes down and the lowest note ends, um, the highest note ends there, sorry. Lowest note starts there, highest ends there. If we do vertical, lowest note begins here and it moves up and it keeps going up until we get to this point and so on. Uh, we have spiral where the lowest note might start in the middle and essentially it's like the keyboard is spiraling out. Um, snake, we'll do like a, snake pattern and then there's also a random mode as well and you can add each ghost can have its own different layout which means even though they're all working towards the same uh, scale um, the blue ghost might trigger a different note if it lands here as opposed to the pink ghost Each ghost engine has its own dedicated looper. Uh, this can be really useful to capture something that's happening rather than it, and it constantly being random. So if I just deactivate some of these ghosts and we just have the blue ghost running, I'm going to set the, uh, the rate of the ghost to eight, eighth notes. And I'm going to set the length of the looper to eight steps and then turn it on. And what we can see is it's looping the last eight steps. We can still change the settings whilst it's looping over. And what it means is we've now got eight steps repeating uh, rather than it constantly being random. So let's bring the pink ghost in. And let's loop this also. And let's just have the green ghost uh, moving randomly. So you can create a, a sort of a, a familiarity, uh, a sort of a sequence within the sequence with some ghosts, but then have others running randomly. You can choose to reset the looper. This means when we uh, stop lives, transport and start again, the ghost, uh, the sequence that's been looped will start back from the, the point that it began uh, recording the loop. And we can nudge a loop as well. So we can nudge it back or forwards a step and we can capture a new loop. We have swing uh, for each of the four ghost engines. 
Uh, swing will only be applied to ghosts that have a rate of either 8th notes, 16th notes or 32nd notes. Um, so if you see the swing on buttons are orange, it means they're currently being bypassed. And these will bypass if there's a speed boost, for example, the speed boost might change a ghost from eighth notes to eighth notes triplets for eight steps. So it would temporarily deactivate the swing until it comes back to um, eighth notes. We also have uh, some MIDI options here. So the MIDI options at the moment are turned off, meaning if we go to note mode, no MIDI is coming into the device. Uh, we can choose through. Uh, and what this will do is it will allow MIDI to pass through so we can play it with our controller or we can choose in and what in will do is it will change the key so you can actually play the sequencer a bit like you might play on arpeggiator as sort of an analog sequencer we can sort of shift the transpose of the, the global sequencer's key with our controller We also have a MIDI looper. Now this is different to the looper that's on each Ghost engine. The loopers on the Ghost engines are a bit more detailed and they let you capture a loop of each individual Ghost and still control the settings. The MIDI looper essentially captures the MIDI data being generated globally by the device and, allow, and it offers two functions. One, it allows you to capture a loop in real time of either one, two, four or eight bars linked to the um, time signature. So you, if something's happening and with ghosts, it can be a little bit random. You can capture a loop that then loops over. It also allows you to quick, quickly create a clip out of that loop rather than having to set up a separate MIDI track and route MIDI from one track into another. So I've got this set to two bars. So this is now recording. And once it comes round, it will begin playback. And then if I want to, I can just pick an empty clip slot, click on the clip button. And if we look inside, we now have that MIDI data that's been generated. To trigger a new loop, just click on this again. Let's capture that. Let's do another one. And stop to stop the clip, stop the loop. And now we've just created um, three different clips from the random sort of looping sequencer uh, that is Ghosts. Whilst any of the arcade devices are running, um, you'll notice that they release control of the controller when the device isn't selected. If you would like to keep the arcade uh, device locked to a particular controller, you can just use the little device lock button here. And this means now if we change track or different device, it makes no difference. The In this situation, Ghost is uh, locked to the uh, Launchpad Pro. This can be really useful if you've got say two or three controllers and you want to use a different arcade device on each controller rather than losing the focus each time you change track or change device to control something. At any point you can turn off the arcade button, releasing control, so you can just use the device as usual um, and the, uh, the arcade device just carries on running in the background. For more information and more devices, uh, be sure to check out the Isotonic website and make sure you check out the manuals for each of the Arcade series devices on there too.